if anybody who wants to join uh, the Canadian Open Data Summit, I just want to let you know that there we have a, or it's Canadian Open Data Society, sorry. We do have a website up, which you can check out. It's opendatasociety.ca, and you'll find a place to register there. Um, okay, so on to Monica. Thanks a lot, Herb. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Monica Granados. I'm located in Ottawa, and I'm a board member for the Canadian Open Data Society. I joined the Canadian Open Data Society because I believe that data really can empower but only when it's accessible to all. This is central to the Canadian Open Data Society. As a society, we also recognize that there's a long and rich history of open data that has gotten us to, to this point, to today. And we are here today because of the amazing, tireless work of others. So to help us celebrate this history, Dr. Tracy Lorio, a longtime leader and champion in Canada's open data space, We'll share the journey of open data in Canada with you folks. Tracy, you're muted. Classic Zoom annoyance, right? Classic. So what I was saying was, is I'm going to go through this super fast, um, but it's going to give us a little teaser as to how this is situated in a much broader conversation. Open data didn't just happen out of nowhere. It has a long provenance and there's a broad context globally that zooms into the Canadian context that zooms into actual initiatives in Canada themselves. I like to start off with the Antarctic Treaty of 1959 because that's one of the first global treaties. We also signed on to it where it was very clear that we were going to share data between and among uh, international organizations who wanted to do research in Antarctica as the continent of science. Uh, in 1992, we have the UNSED Brazil Conference uh, by the United Nations, where chapter 41 of the Agenda 20, uh, chapter 40 of Agenda 21, clearly states that countries should embark on sharing their data so that we can hopefully build a more sustainable future for us all. Now I jump way, way ahead, because you see there's all kinds of initiatives that are happening in the background, but we jump way ahead to the open definition of 2005, but also just before 2005, there's the European Union Public Sector Information uh, Directive that is happening that is also setting the stage to get government thinking uh, globally about open data, but particularly in the United Nations. Uh, we see a little bit later some OECD principles coming forward, and we have the OEC recommendations on publishing the government data, which is great in 2008. And then we, of course, have the Open Government Partnership that opens up in 2011 and countries globally begin to sign on for freedom of information as well as to open up their data and of course Canada becomes a part of that as well. The Open Data Institute is founded in 2012 and in 2015 we see the Open Data Charter being adopted as, as the, the definition and as an approach that countries around the world adopt and this is when we start seeing the concept of open by default and also a series of data sets that nation states should make available to the public for better deliberations. And then we have this open smart definition that happens in 2019 that comes out of Open North, where we start going open data, open technology, open science, and open government being merged together. Now, if we take another look at it and we start moving in, so we go global, but we're also going a bit more into Canada, we can go back to 1986 where we have the first census data consortium that is developed by a sociologist at Carleton University in collaboration with Statistics Canada, and that would be Wendy Watkins uh, with Ernie Boyko at the time. And of course, the Canadian Association of Research Libraries that open up and purchase data that they could actually, um, that they purchase data under a consortium license because at the time, census data and Statistics Canada data were for far too expensive for Canadians to be able to afford. Uh, so this was one way to ensure that faculty and students had access to Canadian information. In other words, prior to that, we primarily studied the United States because those were the only data that we could actually afford to access. 
If we move a little bit further, we start seeing the Canadian geospatial data policy uh, emerge. Uh, we begin to see the Standing Committee on Industry, Science and Technology. And that's really the first time in an official over, uh, government capacity where the concept and the terminology of open data emerges in the context of Canada. And you can see that's in about 2008. So while open data and some many argue it starts at around 2005 officially, you know, it's, it's always hard to figure out when the first day is or the first or the starting point is, but normally 2005 is thought to be the start of open data. But in Canada officially in government, at least at the national government, it's the Standing Committee on Industry, Science and Technology that begins to consider uh, open data. And then we also have in 2010, 2011, some open data consultations. But we also have in 2010, the resolution on access to information and privacy commissioners who say, um, and this is pro provinces, territories, and the federal government agree in a resolution that data should be open and that we should have more freedom of information and that we should sign on to open government because they were hearing of the open government partnership happening globally. Uh, we hear about the OGP uh, that happens and Canada participates in that. And of course, in 2019, we have the open government partnership hosted here in Ottawa, led by the Treasury Board Secretariat. And now to the juicy stuff, right? So this is where the, the open data stuff that we know really starts coming together. Now it does start much earlier on with Rankin and Ruth who were data librarians who were put in the as sociologists and data librarians. But we had this weird thing called the Nielsen Task Force at the federal government that actually recommends at the time the Mulroney government that they make data open and that they open Canadian information to the public. It doesn't quite happen that way because instead of opening the data, the government of the day chose to sell the data at a very exorbitant price at that time. So this, is, this was also the era of cost recovery in spite of the Nielsen Task Force report. Uh, later on, we see really the first open data port. We see the community data program, sorry, which is our community-based organizations under a consortium license, buying data together so that they can do their frontline work on social justice and anti-poverty types of activities. The first portal in the world or in the world, first portal in Canada, I'm exaggerating of course here, is GeoGratis. And that happens uh, at Natural Resources Canada under um, the leadership of the early days of the spatial data infrastructure. And it's really the first where they, they start talking about open licenses and making data open. And then a little later on, we see, again, community-based organizations coming together under the geographic and numeric information systems, where they're again purchasing data and making those available at community-based organizations. We have geoconnections uh, that happens just a bit before and geoconnections is really about um, uh, open data, open source, open specifications, open standards, distributed models of, the, of delivering Canada's geospatial data on the web for free to Canadians and pushing again the agenda of our open licenses. But open data as a term and as a concept really happens in Canada in about 2005, first with how they vote um, uh, with this program to try and demonstrate to Canadians that we should, really should be paying attention to what our leaders do at the local level, at the provincial level and territorial level and at the federal level, how they vote, do they show up in the house, uh, what do they say in the media. In addition to that, the first listserv emerges. Uh, a number of people come together from across the country from multiple sectors, launch the civicaccess.ca list where it provides us a way to convene at least online uh, as it was very difficult for us to travel across the country. We see the Data Libida blog come online in 2007, 2008, or actually 2007 is the first blog that's really starting to bring together these ideas and, and conversations about open data. We also have Visible Government, which, which was only around for a short amount of time, but it was an organization that was doing some very interesting advocacy work, also with the private sector, which is also very important. And then, ta-da, we have in 2009, we have Nanaimo to be the first place in Canada to have an open data portal. So a small community out west where Herb is from, 
Uh, so there was clearly something in the water, something in the ocean, something in the wind out west uh, with, with terms of open data and open data societies. And so we have Nanaimo and then of course other cities begin to follow suit shortly thereafter and we see quite a bit. We also see um, the open, the G4s where the governments start coming together to collaborate with each other, to begin to negotiate licenses, to start talking about standards, to begin talking about portals. And I was just talking with Daryl Bridge in the city of Ottawa just a couple of weeks ago. It's now G4 plus many, and they still meet on a monthly basis to discuss uh, what they're doing and some of their practices and sharing some of their, their ideas. So that's really exciting. Uh, we also have Open North that comes on board, and we also have many, many cities, working cities, but provinces begin to start their open data programs and their open data initiatives. We have companies like Aja, we have Go Open Data, uh, and we have, I saw Yuri here, uh, who is on the, uh, as part of the audience for today, so that group, and they continue to have conferences. And then look at that. We have the open government tour. So Richard Pietro has been doing the videos, did that tour across the country in 2014. But then we also have the Canadian Open Data Summit that Herb was talking about us. And so the precursor for today. Um, and as we move along, we begin to see other types of activities. We see the Open Government Partnership and the Open Government Summit. We see the Multi-Stakeholder Forum on Open Government comes in in 2018. So we begin to see civil society actors sitting with government trying to develop the Open Government Plan. And then, uh, and that we see that in 2019, the summit happens in Ottawa. And then finally, here we are today with the launch of the Canadian Open Data Society a new civil society organization, East, West, North, South, that's going to convene us and bring us together and provide us another forum to be able to advocate and work towards and do really interesting things and spearhead some conversations about open data. So again, congratulations to you all for having done this. Uh, happy to talk about these timelines at another time because I would love to refine it and make them better, but that's for another day. For today, congratulations to all of you and over to you, Herb. And I will unshare. Oh. Thanks, Tracy. That was awesome. Very, very well done. Thanks a lot. Um, Derek. Yes, hello. Uh, quick question for you, Tracy. Those slides, can we get those slides? Those are fantastic. Just the, the whole history there. Um, of course you can. Of course you can. So I, I have them under a Creative Commons license. So you have them and you can share them with whoever you like. You can put them on the site if you like. So you're saying that's an example of open data then is what you're saying. That would be correct. Uh, under Creative uh, Commons, share alike, open sign, or oh, Creative Commons, share alike, copy left license. Right, exactly. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Tracy. That was fantastic. Um, and for me, it really puts in perspective the history. Like we are here today because of the amazing work that so many people have done. I mean, I was looking at a list of people who are here uh, and there's so many names of people who've inspired me for years with the work that you've done, uh, as well as all sorts of new names and faces of people that I'm really excited to meet and connect with. Uh, and, and, you know, it just this is building. We're, we're, we're getting somewhere really exciting with this. Um, and so super excited that you're here with us. So my name is Derek. Uh, I am the president of the Canadian Open Data Society. Um, and I'm here today because I believe the challenges we face today are too big to have data hidden behind walls. Uh, access to data is power and we will need every bit of power we can to meet the great challenges of our time. So I want to take everybody here on a bit of a journey. This is partly my journey, but it's also sort of the journey to uh, the launch of the Canadian Open Data Society. Um, so Herb's already talked about how important the Canadian Open Data Summit has been in really helping build and strengthen the community. And my first experience the, the, with the Canadian Open Data uh, Summit was actually in Niagara, or well, not Niagara Falls, it was in Edmonton in 2017. And it was really cool. I was brand new in the space and to walk into this, this place where you're just surrounded by people who, who share your passion and your energy, you know, and it's just a couple of days where we had a chance to sort of leave the world that we were in and, and imagine a world that could be better. And I remember staying up late <laughs> many nights, did not sleep very much that week. Um, but it was an amazing week and just staying up debating and scheming with other people uh, about what we were doing and, and how we can make the world better. But it wasn't just ideas. People were telling stories of real things that they were doing in their daily lives to really make open data real and show how open data can change the world. So that, for me, helped it go from this theoretical you know, vision for a future world to something concrete and doable and 
it was just really exciting to see. And it was at that 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 first um, or my first gathering in Edmonton. The group of us there talking about you know as we were scheming about where this could go, like how can we do this together? And I, I know there's a bunch of you here. I just remember we had a, a steak dinner because you know Alberta, and there's a bunch of us who were eating steak and talking about well where do we go from here? How do we build this and grow this to more than just a single event every year into something bigger? And that same group of us, I remember a couple months later, uh, the next sort of adventure uh, that I got to take part in was at GovMaker in Fredericton. And Tracy, you were there and you gave this presentation about how in the open space, there's all these different movements from open data to open science, to open government, uh, open contracting, these different open movements, but th they were oftentimes siloed and separate from each other. And you really kind of threw down a gauntlet and challenged us to think about how do we weave these things together and, and, and build something bigger because you know, in these chaotic times, the, the vision for openness and pushing open values was hugely, hugly important. And we needed to come together and get it out of our silos to really work as a cohesive movement. It was a fantastic presentation. And I remember a bunch of us were in a pub. Well, I, think, I think it was like right after that. Uh, we hit the pub early, I guess. Uh, and I mean, Yuri, I remember you were there with me and I think there's a bunch of others there. Uh, and we started scheming about like, okay, well, you know, now that we've been inspired by Tracy, where do we go from here? What, what do we what do we do? How do we make this concrete? And I, I think it was, for me anyways, I think that was the first time that we started talking about, well, what if we created something that brought us together to build this movement? And one of the concrete things that came out of that was that the CODs next year in Niagara, we actually, a group of us came together and it's like, let's do a workshop on how do we build a movement for open data in Canada. And I know Connie, you were there, and Lorna, you were there, and there's a bunch of us who started like talking about how do we build this movement? What does this look like? And we came up with a series of concrete actions that we could take. And I know one of the ones that I had put my hand up for was to create a monthly community call. And Richard has since have really come in and helped kind of give some life to that uh, and, and help have it have legs. Um, but that was something concrete that came out of it. As you can see, this idea of building something that brings us together, that supports the growth of the open data movement, really started to build out these different events. Coming out of those pods, there's a group of um, people, it's like this loose working group of uh, former uh, uh, summit hosts, as well as a couple other key people in the community. And I have no idea how I ended up on the call. I, I, <laughs> like most things in my life, I just kind of snuck in there and hope no one noticed. Um, I, and it was this group that basically came about to say, like, how do we keep pods going? How do we continue to support it? What can we learn from past pods to inform the next summit? And there's this conversation, and I, I remember Moses, who at the time was with the Open Government team, was really pushing this idea that we got to think more long term. There's this feeling like we're, we're kind of just flying too much by the seat of our pants, and we want to give it a bit more structure. And so what if we created some type of organization? And so that then combined with this whole push around uh, building a movement for open data in Canada. And a group of us put our hands up, and so it was myself, Herb, uh, Paul, and Lorna, and they said, well, we'll see where we can put that, <laughs> we, can, we can push this. Uh, and so we ended up uh, sort of flushing out some ideas about what this could look like. And then in the, that spring, so this is the spring of 2019, we sent a call out to many of you. And many of you responded, basically saying, hey, we are going to develop this organization and we're looking for people to join the board to help build this organization to really support the ongoing work of the summit and build and strengthen a movement for open data in Canada. And we got this flood of a uh, ton of applications. And then we brought together some people we thought were really smart. Uh, so Tracy was part of this group. Um, I know Yuri, who's on the call, is part of this group. Sean Noy from Open North was on this group. Uh, uh, Rob Davidson was on this group. And we basically went through all the applications and like it was this like wealth of riches of like, trying to figure out who do we bring in to really help us imagine this. But then also how do we build a bigger community around this? From that, we got our core board together. And over the last year, we have been on this journey of how do you build an organization? How do you create a vision for that organization? And just when we felt like things were really going, we're getting our momentum behind us, of course, COVID hit. <laughs> and then you have to pivot and be like, oh my God, how do you build an organization in a pandemic? Um, but the community has been incredibly supportive and we are here. We are here now today because of this amazing work. And um, I just can't say thank you enough to everybody who's been part of this journey to get us here and really welcome all of you to continue to be part of this journey with us as we move forward and grow this into something bigger and better uh, from here on in. So I will try to sit down and, and talk less and I'll flip it over to uh, Rena. I believe you are next. Okay. Um, hi everyone. Thank you so very much, Derek. Um, my name, I just wanna give a brief intro about myself. My name is Rena Shaw. 
I am a data scientist based in downtown Toronto. I've participated in several data thons as a practitioner, and uh, I saw firsthand the value of using open data. Now, I joined the CODs because um, I felt empowered to have an opportunity to influence the practice, the dialogue, and the standards around open data. So, keeping my intro aside, what is the Canadian Open Data Society all about? As Herb rightly mentioned, uh, the Canadian Open Data Society is a grassroots movement of passionate people on a mission to raise awareness of open data and advocate for its use in all sectors for the benefit of all Canadians. Our vision is threefold. We want to make Canada a global model of a genuinely open society, one that empowers and improves the lives of its people, and one that freely publishes, gives access to, and uses high quality open data in all areas. As part of our mission, we want to become a community of practice that advances learning, standards, and data quality. Now, what does the Canadian Open Data Society do? We have three functions. Number one, the Canadian Open Data Society is the steward of the Canadian Open Data Summit. And more on this very soon. Number two, the society holds regular learning opportunities, such as webinars on timely topics that will interest everyone from open data practitioners to newbies to the movement. And number three, we work with partners in the open data community on advocacy, awareness, and events to help raise the level of debate on open data and its critical role in democracy, the economy, society, and the environment. As promised, coming back to the summit. Now, the Canadian Open Data Summit, in turn, is a community-driven event that was held each year between 2014 to 2018 in a different Canadian city with a new partner host. The Canadian Open Data Summit is slated for revival in 2021. So book your tickets for that. Um, what happens during the summit and why is it so valuable to people who are interested in open data? Now the Canadian Open Data Summit addresses on a national stage, the most vibrant opportunities and the most pressing challenges facing the open data community. Experts from all sectors come together to share best practices and local experiences. At the summit, we get to learn from top international thought leaders and to work on growing the community strategically and collaboratively. My concluding emotions. We've all heard that democracy dies in darkness, but the better perspective is that democracy thrives in the open. The open movement is all about promoting the value of sharing as widely as possible, especially in a digital age, and about putting on our own tights and cape, each of us as citizens, to do our bit to strengthen democracy. Everyone is welcome to participate. And to wrap my part up, I have a call to action for all of you. As a board director in charge of social media, um, I will be sending a survey to all those who registered for today's launch event. Um, please let us know via the survey what topics or formats would you like to see. We would be more than happy to cater to you. And we also have a slew of webinars uh, already planned for you. We'd love to hear from you from the survey. Please let us know what you'd like to see. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Rena. Eugene, muted. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, hear ya. Hi. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Rena. Uh, my name's Eugene, and I'm from Edmonton. I'm a data developer who just wants to continue to help citizens make important and informed decisions using transparent and good quality open data. I've had a chance to build a few of these tools, and um, it's pretty clear to me through OGP and through other sort of initiatives that Canada is a leader and in open data, thanks to many of you. And we're looking to collaborate and continue this leadership. 
On that note, we're excited to launch a monthly webinar that will benefit open data advocates and everyday citizens across the country. Um, they'll focus on three main things. The first is education about open data, and they'll include teaching new skills like machine learning or data analysis so you and other people can do more. Then next we would uh, we'd be looking at advocating for issues related to open data, including our rights to data that can affect decisions we make around key things like the environment, inequality, and social justice. Finally, the webinars and our, our sessions will look to connect open data advocates across the country and beyond so that we're able to even make greater impact together. Now, we want the webinars to be filled with content that um, people like you would be excited about and we'd love to hear have your input on um, what you want to see. We've set up four webinars and we're, uh, so far and we're hoping that these are the ones that you'll enjoy. Uh, the first webinar in November is uh, with LinkedIn and it will be about building a career in open data. We'll be hearing from people who have built careers in open data, as well as people who are hiring for those with open data skill sets. In December, the webinar will focus on the role of open of data in relation to racial justice in Canada. In January, there'll be one about, um, there'll be a hands-on tutorial on using machine learning in with open data. And in February, Richard Pietro from ReopenGov will lead a workshop um, on using storytelling principles to create engaging government content that will help you build support in your work and in your lives. Um, that's just up to February. We have more ideas and we want to hear from you, whether it's something you want to see or you it's something that you want to participate in. So you can find out more details about the webinars on our website and um, they'll be just on opendatasociety.ca. We'll put up a post, we'll put up a, uh, a link in the chat as well. Thanks. Thank you, Eugene. Looking forward to all those fabulous webinars, such a diversity. Um, a quick word, just to reiterate that our key event and our raison d'être is the Canadian Open Data Summit. Uh, la genèse et l'objectif principal uh, de la CCDO, c'est son d'appuyer le sommet canadien sur les données ouvertes. Nous sommes très enthousiastes uh, à ce sujet. Nous espérons que vous vous joindrez tous et toutes à nous pour le sommet en 2021 et pour uh, aider à faire passer le mot. We're so excited that the summit is coming back in 2021. Uh, we hope you'll all join us and help us get the word out. Uh, watch for announcements from the host city, uh, including who that is in coming weeks and months. Now our treasurer and interim executive director will talk about how you can get involved. Thank you, Lorna. Uh, so yes, my name is Paul Connor. Yes, I'm the treasurer and executive director uh, interim. And uh, like everyone else, I was asked to talk about uh, first why I'm involved. And uh, I guess that goes to my background. First of all, I spent many years uh, facilitating angel investment into technology companies. And I saw how uh, many small technology companies of late have been able to leverage the insights they've been able to get from open data uh, to be of service to people. And it's not just for-profit, but also uh, non-profit and social enterprises, uh, which I take an abiding interest in. And uh, secondly, another job I had was as a research manager for economic research uh, uh, in the government. And uh, that taught me the value of open data in terms of accountability and also, again, helping businesses get a sense of you know, their environment and uh, who best and how best to serve them. And, and accountability, is, uh, of course. So my passion here, and I think uh, from the chat, uh, some of the things I'm seeing, this will resonate. I'd like to see corporate registers and real property registers opened up, has been, as has been proposed in a number of Canadian provinces. Uh, this would help us live up to our reputation as an honest country. And I have to believe that good businesses can leverage that reputation far better than the current regime of, shall we say, obscurity helps a certain few. 
Uh, I'd also like to see competition authorities mandate open data releases from, uh, shall we say, uh, companies with market power. Uh, this has actually been proposed in the US uh, very recently. I was wanting on that, like, whoa, that's a great idea. Um, this would definitely help us level the playing field uh, uh, versus uh, the giants, uh, you know, who perform valuable services, but, you know, network effects being what they are, uh, the public interest must uh, also be satisfied. I think this is a great way to do it. So that's actually also my pitch for uh, getting everyone to sign up uh, to join us. And I'm just going to share my screen uh, directly uh, with your microphone has gone muted, Paul. Not muted, but it's, there's something covering your microphone. Oh, uh, how's that? Is that better? Can you hear me better? Hey, oh. Did you just place something on your microphone or something? There's nothing. That, on we can hear you perfectly now. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. So, uh, as has been said in the chat, look for us on social media. And uh, our number one way right now to get people to join is through patreon.com. It was the easiest way to do it. It works in US dollars, so you have to correct for that. So $5 Canadian is 375 US. Uh, we will start up a Stripe account as well. But this affords you the support of the organization and all the aims that have been talked about today. Uh, it affords you uh, all the things that are listed here, the news, our, our awareness efforts that Rena and Doug will be uh, working on, our advocacy efforts, we'll be asking you to join an advocacy committee. If you have some passion in open data like the one I've just shared, or even the one I've just shared, I'd love to have you join our committee. It's on our website, the, the form. And uh, of course, as has been said many times, uh, with great justice, participate in our events. Uh, and so to get us started, uh, we are looking for your support. Uh, anyone who joins in that first full year uh, will be considered for the rest of their natural lives a founding member of the organization. So uh, uh, I hope that sweetens the pot a little bit. Um, I, I just feel like if the more people sign up to us, even to our newsletters or whatever we put out, who, who just consider themselves part of our movement, the more strength we'll have, the, the more uh, we'll be able to make people uncomfortable for a brief time as we say, hey, you should open these data sets. They may seem lucrative, they may seem a little bit sensitive, they may delve into your inner workings, but really look how well it's worked out for other people. It can work out very well for all of us uh, beyond <laughs> so far, it has proven to be a, a bipartisan thing in Canada and in the United States. Uh, so uh, there, there's definitely um, no choice to be made there. Uh, everyone thinks this is a good idea. So uh, I will just uh, stop there. I had prepared remarks, but you ever prepare remarks and you look at them five minutes before you're going to deliver them and you go, I don't talk like that. <laughs> well, now you've heard how I really talk and I hope that's fine. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Okay, thanks, Paul. Okay, so uh, it's uh, time to open the floor for questions. Our board member, Doug Vidal Hernandez, will facilitate. Hey everyone, I'm uh, Doug here, one of the board members here at CODS. Just wanna give a little brief introduction to myself. Uh, I first kind of got started with the whole movement of open data actually through Ottawa Civic Tech. A lot of the number of organizations that were working and a lot of the projects that were happening uh, at Ottawa Civic Tech made great use of some of the data that was available. Um, and it really inspired me to kind of get involved in the movement and kind of how important it really is to ensure that we have proper open data sets that aren't just PDFs available to be actually used. So, like I said, um, anyone who is welcome to ask questions, feel free to do so here in the chat, um, and we'd be happy to answer any of them. I'm not sure. Doug, if you saw the one I sent in the chat, or sent in the chat already, I didn't send the question, but I have one from someone who has had to leave. Please, Laura. Uh, okay. This is a, a student and a newcomer to Canada who had to leave to go to class, but is really interested and excited. Um, and he's asking, um, he, uh, he's a data professional, by the way, who's new to Canada, is 
Claude's a good platform to learn practice through volunteer projects because he's preparing to study policy and statistics and he's looking for a platform to showcase the skills he's about to learn. And I said, yes, and I'd bring that to the group, capture the answer and send it to him in an email. So what does anyone think about that on the board or Tracy? Well, I can say that we're working on an Open Data 101 presentation with Go Open Data right now. Uh, should be ready soon, and we're going to put that, we're going to bank it, if you will. Uh, it, it may come up in the schedule, but it is something definitely to refer to. And uh, I also was hoping to do one on data literacy that really focuses on, on open data to make this as accessible as possible to everyone, even people who don't work with data uh, at all, uh, but who might see the value in us uh, as a cause. And I believe that will just get us started. We'll probably do much more and we would welcome volunteer support for that. It'd be awesome to have someone doing data analytics and data science and getting some of, you know, some people rolling up their sleeves and diving into some data as well. So bonus, lucky you guys, you've already got a really hot button volunteer. Thanks guys, I'll pass that on to Dominic. Well, and I, I think, yeah, I, one thing I just want to clearly say as well is that I, I think this is part of like where the community can help sort of direct us and where we can, in terms of where uh, there are opportunities for us as a community to go and really make an impact. Uh, beyond just building a community, we want to have tangible, clear impacts on, on making Canada better for open, can, uh, open data and, and openness. And I think this is also a really good opportunity for us to work with other amazing organizations uh, in this space. Like I'm thinking civic tech communities are a great place that we could get plugged in and work with the different civic tech communities and with Code for Canada on this as well um, to create opportunities for people to work with open data to have real concrete impacts. You read my uh, mind, it. civic tech, yay. I was gonna recommend that to Dominic anyway. Thanks for everyone for backing me up there. No, we uh, also had a question there in regards to the membership price. And I know Lorna answered that question within the chat, but just for those who weren't actually able to see the actual question itself, um, there were a couple inquiries in there around uh, the pricing of, of CODs as well. I know Paul answered some of those questions, but I just wanted to, to reiterate for those who actually did miss it. It was just $5 uh, a, a month um, or $60 uh, a year. Canadian. Canadian, correct. Patreon, you do have to correct for that, but we'll start Stripe soon. So three seventy five American. Now that sounds less, doesn't it? <laughs> so, so if we want to give you more money, can we? Oh, absolutely. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that confirmation, Paul. Uh, we had a question here as well from Brent, um, a very open ended question actually on is open data safe? I'll leave it here to the board if anybody wants to add in particular. But I wonder if Brent could um, uh, elaborate a little bit on what does he mean by what does he mean by safe? I mean, is he still is he online? Can we can we get people to um, speak on? Like, can we open up the mute for them or no? IoT devices. Oh, IoT devices. For anyone who doesn't know IoT, Internet of Things devices. I have, I have a separate question, only because I see a, a former student there, but she's busy working right now, so we won't, we won't make her ask a question. Uh, but she's been working in open science, so how does open science and open data relate? Is that uh, an adjunct to the question we're trying to answer now, or a separate question? While you're answering both, I wasn't sure where we were at with that last question. Okay. Can I? Yeah, I mean, question I, try. Go for it, Paul. Okay. Uh, th these are actually real concerns. There, I, I believe, in fact, if I'm going to be completely forthcoming, they're twofold. Uh, one is people uh, sensitized to, shall we call it, surveillance enterprise, uh, may be concerned about their personal data being exposed. And it is absolutely against the principles of open data to do any such thing. Uh, it's not open data if it does that, frankly. Uh, there's, you know, reasonable avenues uh, under controlled conditions uh, with trusted persons, uh, like the people to whom you give your credit card when you do a transaction, uh, only then, but that has nothing to do with open data. And uh, anyone who saw anything like that in open data would quickly flag it. Uh, we are habituated uh, as practitioners and as a movement to observe those principles. 
Uh, the other uh, possible concern that maybe I'm just winging it here is to do with um, asset mapping or other um, inventories uh, uh, that may be um, of national uh, concern. And I have to say, quite frankly, I think that concern is a bit overblown uh, because uh, you can identify just about anything from overhead imagery uh, at this point. And uh, a lot of that sort of stuff is already exposed. Telephone directories can be, you know, uh, have machine learning applied to them if you like. So it would be better to get ahead of that and make use of it for our good purposes uh, rather than worry uh, about uh, the possibility, which could be even uh, red teamed if I can use a, a term of art, uh, that they may be used for ill purposes. Uh, but I think the main concern is about personal information being exposed, and that is definitely opposite to open data. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. There's a little bit of Tracy's questions too. So Tracy um, asked a little bit about um, sort of what's the intersection between open data and open science. Um, you, the way that's sort of been uh, looked at in the in the open science field is that open data is a facet of open science. You know that it's one step in the in the process from you know creating science and doing science to the communication of science. And uh, by having open data, it, it's a it's a crucial element of open science to to sort of maximize the impact of open science. So when you have open data, you can share data more easily. Um, it's more transparent so that, um, you know, you can determine whether or not the science is robust. It's more reproducible um, and it's just easier to share. So the idea is that open data can accelerate science. With regards to the um, sort of the privacy aspect, um, so something that's been stipulated explicitly in the roadmap for open science um, in the context of the government of Canada is a specific recommendation for the safety of sensitive data. And so there are going to be an explicit recommendation that will um, talk about when certain sensitive data cannot be released. And so this is something, the sensitivity of data in the context of open data is something that is always thought of, thought of um, in, in uh, these conversations. I'd like to add a little bit, this may be a good time to add a little bit about open data. I'm not, maybe everybody on the call isn't really that familiar with open data. And so just, you know, the, the, idea, the idea is really with open data that data is, is uh, more valuable. The premise of mine, it is really that the data is more valuable the more it can be shared. And so, so if you're a holder of data that you want to share, you want to share it in a way that uh, that makes it sort of maximizes its value. And so the, the there's this thing called the open definition, which you can look it up at opendefinition.org. And it really just says uh, there's there's three main aspects to it. There's the accessibility, so like can someone actually get access to the data? And then there's the format, like is the data published in a format that's easily readable? And then is there a legal framework that allows people to, to make use of that data in a way that, that, is, um, that is free and open? And so the, it's the combination of those three things. If you do those things well, the idea is that you, you know, people will be more encouraged and, and feel more free to use your data and create value with it. And if you're a uh, government that's, that's um, wanting to engage your citizens that's you know you want to you want to do a really good job of that so that the data is really easily accessible and usable if you're a company that's trying to uh, publish your catalog of, of articles that you sell you want to publish that data in a way that's really easily consumable and usable by people that want to integrate with your system um, and if you're like a nonprofit that wants to um, that wants to you know promote how many you know show how many uh, Maybe uh, I mean, we had a, a real example I'm going to share is like we, you know, a company that or it's actually just a group of people that created a an app that showed where the vacant places to stay were for homeless people in downtown Vancouver. And, you know, making that data easily available so that people can read it using their smartphones was was, was the way that one was done. So just just, you know, the whole idea is like, how do you do this? Well, how do you how do you put your data out there so that people can easily and consume it and they're encouraged to do so. Thanks for that, I appreciate that. 
Um, one of the questions that we had here in the chat as well is if they could get a copy of the actual recording of today's session. Um, some people had to jump off or came in a little bit later. Just want to confirm that we will have this, this session has been recorded and so we will actually be able to share this with you folks afterwards um, for any of those who missed any content uh, uh, for any reason whatsoever. So just want to say that if uh, there are any other questions as well, like feel free to tweet us uh, at Open uh, Data Society. So uh, we'll put the uh, the Twitter handle there in, in the chat as well. But uh, I'll give it back to Herb so you can give back his closing statements. Uh, I just see one more question showing up there. It's, uh, will society engage in official lobbying activities directed at governments in Canada? We don't have any plans to do official lobbying activities. We're really, uh, we're really supporting um, not just you know, we're not just directed at government. We're, we're trying to promote the idea of open data and making it usable. And we're enthusiasts around open data, let's say that. Um, and, and our primary goal is to support the summit. Um, and uh, for those who prefer audio, okay, so that's it. Yeah, so um, if there are no more questions, I just wanna say thanks. This is, this is really great. Uh, I'm really proud of the work we've done. It's been a, been a bit of a long haul to get here. Um, but I think we've built a really great foundation. We've done a good job of finding people from across the country. Um, I feel like we've got a, we've got, um, you know, different representation from a lot of different sectors of society and we're going to do great things. And I'm really excited about that. The summit's going to be amazing. The next summit that we have is going to be amazing with this kind of foundation. And I'm really proud of it. And, um, I, I think if we keep in mind, like, the, the idea around open data for me is really about people participating and having the opportunity to participate in on a level footing. And so with that, I want to say thanks very much for coming today. Thanks to the board and um, have a great day. Thanks a lot. Thanks everyone. Yay! Onward and upward. Yay! Are we, are we going to hang around for a few minutes after just to debrief? We're gonna go for beers. I, I, I can hang around. Virtual pint. That's right, <laughs> virtual pint. All right, cool. Thank you. We can hang yeah. for a bit. Uh, yeah, as I'm, a, I'm happy to hang out. Yeah, just for like five minutes. Okay, Thank nice everyone. Food. Thank you so much, everyone. Great job delivering your material, everyone. Thanks, everyone who showed up and ch chatted. Lots of activity. I love it. Yep. Mm -hmm.